Hi, this is Andrew Gaughan of Andrew Gaughan Knits, and I'm going to be demonstrating the method of braiding in ends. This can be used when you have a pattern like this that is stranded color work and you're frequently changing colors, and that results in a large number of ends that need to be dealt with. And it would take a long time to weave all these ends in one by one. So a method you can use is braiding all the ends together and it's much uh, more efficient to do and holds those ends in very securely. So this specific sweater, I've actually already done this process here and I've just undone it. So that's why the ends are a bit crinkled, but I'll be able to show you exactly how I would proceed here. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is go along and make sure you give each of these ends a little tug and make sure that the tension is okay at each of those spots and you can go then back onto the right side to check it, that all the stitches look the right size um, before you begin to secure them. And then what I did is lay them all out and if they were a variety of different lengths, you want to take some scissors and trim them all to around four inches. That makes it so you have plenty enough length to weave even through the braid, but you don't have any more bulk than is necessary at that braid. And then what I like to do to get the incorporation of the braids to go as neatly as possible is you can separate the ends out um, from which side they were on. Okay, and then we just start at the very top and the frequency of the ends on this specific design, which is my Funfetti Raglan, uh, made it so that it actually works out pretty perfectly to incorporate one new end in each time. So that's what I'll be doing. But if you have a different uh, regularity of ends, you just incorporate a new end as soon as you reach it as you work your way down. So I just start with three strands, and begin braiding, and so I start here, pick up and incorporate a new strand, pick up and incorporate a new strand, pick up and incorporate a new strand, I'll continue this all the way along. So as I progress, there's more and more bulk in each of these strands. But since we trimmed them, as we get further, some of the strands will run out. So that will minimize the total bulk. And you wanna be sure as you do this that you're not pulling very tightly. You wanna make sure this can comfortably lay flat. If you pull too tightly, it's gonna pucker the fabric. And here you can see some of these ends are starting to get used up. They're gonna kind of pop out at some point and that's totally okay. They've been incorporated in enough different folds of the braid that they will be held very securely in there. So you can see in this time, we've already dealt with over half the ends and if you're used to weaving in ends, you know in this time I probably would have just be through maybe the first couple pairs with an ordinary method.
country. Nearing the end here already. You can see you don't have to be super precise. I'm not certain that I picked up exactly one every time, but it does work out to be around that rate. And this will actually probably be a bit easier for you if these ends aren't all crinkled like mine are from having already been braided. Okay, once we get these last few in here, I'll show you how we'll secure the end. Okay, so I just incorporated that very last one here. And then what I did to secure my ends is I divided the center one so that I have about equal amount of ends on each side. And all I did is tie a square knot. I did one knot, another. Some of those pieces are little, so they didn't really get all the way in there they are gonna be plenty secured from this. And that end bit looks a little bit messy, but you never know it on the right side. And then you can go ahead and trim these. I already trimmed them just so they wouldn't be long enough to poke out, but you could trim them uh, as long as you leave a little bit so that if it somehow loosened up over time, you have just enough of ends left to grip that and pull it back. I'd say an inch or two is plenty um, to have left there, but then make sure they don't come out. And so I have already worn this sweater quite a few times and because it has positive ease, I find that I don't notice the bulk of this braid at all while I'm wearing it. If you had a design with negative ease, this might be pressing up against your skin and not be the best method. But as long as you have some room in your sweater, I, um, if you're like me, you probably won't even notice this while you're wearing a sweater and no one would ever know from the outside of the sweater that that is how you secured those ends. All right, I hope you found this method helpful and that you can use it in making your own Funfetti sweater or in any other design that uses a lot of different colors during stranded color work. Thanks for watching.